From the Selfish Path to Romance, download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. Madam, you may vote, but at a price. You lose the right to retreat behind the powder puff or your petticoat. Okay, and that's from Inherit the Wind. And of course, freedom requires responsibility. And a lot of people will say to me, I'm afraid to make changes because then I'll have to take responsibility of of myself. If I live on my own, then I'll be in charge of my budget. If I uh, move out of my marriage, a very damaging, abusive marriage, then I'll have to figure out how to fend for myself. But that's wonderful, too, to be able to get out on your own and to hear your own mind say, to hear you say to yourself, I can do it. I didn't think I could, but I can. I can set a budget. I can survive on my own paycheck. I can buy my own car. I can uh, leave a bad marriage and survive and be a single parent and survive doing that. And not only survive, but thrive, have a good time with my kids and, and put the past behind me and move on and find a much more loving partner. That's what you want for yourself, that ability to take responsibility and feel pride in taking responsibility. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner, and my show is The Rational Basis of Happiness. My number's toll-free, one eight seven seven Dr. Kenner. That's toll free. One eight seven seven Dr. Kenner. And I'm a clinical psychologist, and that means you can call me with any questions that are really keeping you up at night, that are crowding your mind, that won't let you get a, a night, a full night's sleep, or even a partial night's sleep. That's the type of questions that I help you answer, whether it's family problems, problems at work, problems with yourself, or parenting problems, or problems with aging parents. Those are the issues that I talk about all the time. So pick up the phone, give me a call. And right before the break, I was talking about a woman, a letter from a woman, a man. And Amanda's been married for 18 years, two kids, and ever since she was married, her husband has guy friends on the side, usually one particular guy friend. For the past six years, she he has had his business buddy in real estate on the side. But it's not on the side. Instead, it replaces the emotional intimacy in their marriage. He spends his whole day with his buddy, has lunch with him, dines with him in the best restaurants in Miami, comes home, watches TV, wife is there, ignores the wife, calls the friend four to five times to allegedly talk about work, calls the friend on the weekend. When The wife and the kids and the hubby go out as a whole family. She never has time alone with him. But when they do go out, she says he's there in body but not in mind. And she talks and fights with him endless times and she's ready to give up on him. So, she says, what should I do? And what she needs to do is to help me solve her mystery. Amanda, why have you stayed with him so long? You have given up 18 irreplaceable years of your life to a daily loveless marriage. Why are you staying in that? You need to introspect to understand what has cemented you to this so obviously loveless marriage. Is it the kids? Is it your religion that tells you you can't divorce? Is it financial concerns? Is it security? At least there's a man in the house. Is it your fears of being on your own, having that responsibility? Or any phony promises to yourself that things will change if only. If only what? Well, if only something changes. That's way too global. Nothing will ever change. So you've already run the test. You are massively unhappy in your marriage. It is not a romantic marriage, and you're longing for some. Some people will be okay with what's called a companion marriage. It's like two people living in the same house, coming and going, and they're very, very fond of each other. It's a best friend marriage, but they don't have sex that often. Very low on the intimacy, but they're both okay with that. Well, it's not my thing, but for some people that works. In your case, you've got the antithesis, the exact opposite of what the essential is in a romantic marriage, which is emotional intimacy. Forget about the sexual intimacy even. You don't feel connected with your husband emotionally. Notice you're asking, should I, uh, you're saying I'm ready to give up on him. 
Notice that he gave up on you years ago, and it seems like he's staying there only out of duty or convenience for non-love reasons. The same ones I mentioned, the house, the kids, the finances. But you have clear evidence at this point that he does not feel emotionally or romantically connected to you. So you want to ask yourself, why did you even marry this guy from the get-go? Did you get pregnant and feel you had to get married and now you feel guilty and you're staying with him for religious or other reasons? That's tragic. When you sum up all the evidence you gave me, it's a loveless marriage. And what's going on with him? I don't know. I don't know whether he's gay, whether he's got multiple men on the side or one man on the side, or whether that man he's speaking to all the time is actually another woman and that you've, he's been able to pull the wool over your eyes for a long time, or you've been doing that to yourself. But your solution is not the nagging or the endless fights. It's to come up with a plan to rationally leave him, to try to... Go after your own happiness. So I would get therapy ASAP. You can go to my website, drkenner.com, and see books that I recommend there. There are books on divorce that are excellent. Uh, McKay's book on divorce is excellent. You can also go to the Academy of Cognitive Therapy, academyofct.org, and see if there's a cognitive therapist in your area. But you definitely want to be much more self-respecting. And recognize that even if even with the kids, I'm assuming they're much older now, they're going to survive a divorce much better than many kids survive this very painful, loveless marriage. But kids will say, my parents should have divorced long ago. And as long as you handle the divorce well, of course, if, he, if the dad abandons him, the kids, or you abandon the kids, or there's a lot of fighting, that's not healthy. But you say there's fighting at home now anyway. So I would try to minimize the fighting and try to disentangle yourself from what is not a marriage, a genuine marriage. This is from Janet. Dear Dr. Kenner, my fiancé Tom and I have been together for 11 years but engaged for two. Okay, that raises some questions. He's a professional athlete and travels quite a bit for his career, which I totally support. In July, he left for a month-long tour of the United Kingdom. Two months prior, we had been fighting constantly at each other's throats, being horrible to each other. It was a relief to have a month apart, though I did miss him while he was gone. When he came home a few days ago, he told me he's been unhappy with our relationship for a long time and thought it might be best to go our separate ways. He can't continue to be unhappy. I never saw it coming. We had agreed to take a couple of months off. To, we agreed to take a couple of months off to try to fix things. He seems to be sabotaging all attempts. Communication is nearly impossible. Every time I try to have a rational conversation about the situation, he shuts down or becomes mocking, like I'm nagging him. It's my nature to stress and worry. I'm a champion warrior. So what is it? So it's what I do. So when a bombshell hits me. My reaction is to talk it to death, which has a negative effect. He doesn't want to talk. He just wants to see what happens. I don't see how we can fix it if he doesn't talk or listen to when I talk. He's half of my heart. I don't want to lose him, but I'm starting to feel as though it may be a losing battle. Okay, Janet, it sounds like it already is a losing battle. You're already at each other's throats. You were relieved when he left. You've been engaged for 11 years. Why that long engagement? Uh, he, he's been thinking about the relationship a lot, which happens. And if it's, if you've grown in different directions or at different rates, or maybe one of you wants to start a family and the other doesn't, there are some major disconnects that you want to be able to name to yourself. Uh, the courtship is very unusual. Um, you don't have any kids, so it sounds like you can part. You do want to not have the image of yourself. Challenge that image that you are a fretter, a chronic nail biter, a warrior. You want to have more respect for yourself. This is a major change in your life. You've devoted over a decade to this guy, but it's much better to devote only a decade than two decades and then split up. If it's not working, it's not working, and you can't force him to love you. Uh, you can learn skills to rescue the relationship, but that doesn't mean that you can change his mind. If he's already 
made it a choice to leave, then it sounds like that's the direction you're going in. Again, you can go to my website, drkenner.com. There's also a book, Couple Skills by McKay, same author I mentioned earlier. That's good. But it's not a failure if you part ways. It's a failure to stay together if things are not working out. So I wish you some very good success with this um, and leaving the relationship in a self-respecting way. And when we come back, we will talk with how to deal with sudden emergencies in your life, such as a house fire or uh, leaving work, a layoff at work or a robbery. How do you deal with those crises? We'll talk to an expert, Dr. James Campbell, who will give you some tips on how to manage those situations better. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner on the Rational Basis of Happiness. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by Drs. Kenner and Locke. Understanding another person is not always easy. You come to understand your partner in layers. You see the obvious aspects first and gradually come to understand the deeper layers. This takes mental work. For example, you notice that your partner gets upset when you're away on business, but you might not discover until much later that this is tied to fears of abandonment stemming from a traumatic childhood or a former cheating spouse. Your partner might not even be aware of such a fear if not much time has been spent introspecting. If you keep listening, observing, and talking, you will gradually come to know your partner more intimately. And assuming no surprising negatives are uncovered, you will feel much closer as a result. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com. And you can buy the book at amazon.com.